Islam mourners. Islam, peace and love. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful Sunday morning, the day of the sun. Um, it's going to be rainy today, actually. It's not going to be so sunny, but let's put some positive energy and some positive, positive, positive spirits out there so we can get the sun to come out, even though the so-called forecast uh, shows for rain. I want the sun, so I'm going to be manifesting a sunny day as opposed to a rainy day. Anyway, in the comment section, I put a bunch of information out there, and it's in regards to Moors claiming their Moorish estate. And realizing how we lost it is the same way we reacquired it. Peace and love, Mustafa. We acquire or we venue, revenue, reconvey our property, our lawful property, through administrative processes. The same processes that the corporate fiction has uh, established to usurp and steal our uh, estate is the very same way we revenue it. Affidavit. An affidavit, I wanted to kind of talk about what an affidavit is because an affidavit is in a form of a multitude of different um, people use it, but they call it different things because they want to hide the fact that what they're, stat what they're processing and what they're sending you is an affidavit. And it can come in the form of, let's say, a bill. It could come in the form of... Uh, a solicitor, you know, spam. We get a lot of spam in our uh, at our domiciles through those different fraudulent uh, selling of your information from corporations that um, say that they don't do these things, but you get a lot of solicitations. So apparently, somebody is selling your information in order for people to hypothecate and continue to send you. Um, what do you call it? I'm trying to find something while I'm talking to you guys, so bear with me. Um, and it's interesting because this what this Black's Law Dictionary doesn't even have affidavit. Okay, maybe it does have affidavit in here. Because I wanted to actually read affidavit, okay? Everybody is processing an affidavit. Everybody is sending out affidavits to uh, hypothecate what is yours. Everything is done through a hypothecation, right? So knowing that they don't have status, and I'm talking about foreigners who are under the service corporation as a nom de guerre, and that is including a lot of our uh, tribal members which think that they have family members, but I'm going to use tribal members who also think that they belong and they are so-called citizens of a corporate, of the corporation which they think is a government and a so-called state, both of which it is not. And I'm going to tell you why it is not. I also wanted to put an announcement for today. I will not be having class at Havertown Free Library today. So um, if anybody's on their way there, please reroute back home. I am canceling class today to uh, d deal with much needed uh, lawful things and documentation. So class will not be this week on, on Sunday. It will be uh, the following Sunday. And I might have uh, you know several different uh, Facebook Lives in... Uh, during the week to give you information as well as to give you stuff that you need to know. The way you are conducting yourself speaks volumes of your royal oh, Islam, um, Mustafa. So today we will not have class at the free uh, free library, at Havertown Free Library and uh, corporate jurisdiction, jurisdiction of Havertown. Anyway, an affidavit. I'm going to read the definition, Black's Law, 4th edition of affidavit. And keep in mind, Moors, in the file section, I am almost 100% sure this has already been downloaded or uploaded to the file section. You just probably got to look through all of those files. It's a lot of files there. All of them are very, very important for you. Um, so definitely look up there. I just downloaded a file that went out, an, a lawful affidavit and command to um, the so-called hypothecators claiming um, claiming um, to have uh, ownership of my Moorish estate, which is 1111 um, Yeshirin Moorish, uh, Moabite Moorish estate, uh, Northeast Mexum, uh, X-Rail 36 North Hardwood. So <clears throat> there's a document in there that I'm processing for revenuing and uh, conveying my Moorish estate back into my Moorish trust. So go read that document, download it, save it, 
duplicate it, claim your mortgage estate. So an affidavit is a written or printed declaration or statement of fact, facts made voluntarily and conformed, confirmed by the oath or affirmation of the party making it. Taken before an officer having authority to administer such oaths. Now, we got to realize under sovereignty, there are certain things that other individuals have to adhere to because they are outside of themselves and they uh, either they're outside of themselves because they're a nom de guerre or they are subject to that jurisdiction because they're foreign uh, to this land, meaning they don't have sovereignty and uh, they had to have certain protocols and procedures had to be put in place in order to, to have a voice, have a voice and a standing in someone else's lawful jurisdiction. And I'm speaking with Albion's European, modern Europeans uh, who, who unlawfully and fraudulently claim to be Americans and claim to be white people, both of which they are not. Um, so that platform is for them. So when it says a written or printed declaration or statement of facts made voluntarily and confirmed by the oaths or affirmations of a party making it taken before an officer having authority or to administer such oaths. What it's saying there is that for some people who don't have sovereignty, who don't have a standing in law, they have to go through this administrative process in order to be seen, to be viewed, and to be validated. They need validation as because they are foreign to this land, so certain stipulations were put in place for them to have a voice within this jurisdiction. And I know I'm very early with this this uh, platform and with this Facebook Live because I I have a lot to do today and I wanted to get this out of the way. Um, so you as Moors, your signature and your allodial free national name and your proper person as well as your thumbprint is the highest seal, the highest authority, the highest verification on the land. Nobody else can do that who don't domicile here as a sovereign uh, with supreme powers on the land. So of course, an Albion has to get their documents notarized, has to get one, one of those individuals who were put in place within that, that particular uh, structure to validate or invalidate their standing within our society. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, Moors, when you provide, when you send affidavits of truth, affidavits of fact, your signature along with your red thumbprint, and if you want to get two witnesses, you can definitely do that for affidavits, but it's really not necessary, just so you know, because you're sovereigns of the land and your truth is truth. So, you don't need to get a notarized, your documents notarized, Morris, if you're in your, your allodial national capacity. The only people who need to go through those administrative processes are wards of, uh, as, or uh, Albion's wards, Albion's of that corporate jurisdiction. That is, that, that is the platform that was established for them to have standing within our Moorish government, okay? So, uh, so, that, so we know an affidavit is something written that is supposed to be factual. And if it's an affidavit, it has to have a signature. It has to have a signature of the individual stating that fact as well as um, some type of seal. If they don't have a thumbprint seal being a sovereign, they have to have a notarized seal, one or the other. So when somebody's sitting here giving you documentation, so now we talk about affidavits. When you think about um, tribunal uh, venues, and, the, and then when you even think of um, when uh, corpus. When you think of, let me see, I'm trying to organize my thoughts, a so corpus delecti. I'm going to go look for corpus delecti because I did not um, print that out and I wanted to print that out. So bear with me. I'm going to go find corpus delecti, see if I can find it really, really fast. So, and I bring that up because of corpus delecti, in order for, and we talk in constitutional law, in order for their uh, corpus, in order for there to be an injured party, there has, I mean, in order for there to be some type, for you to you to say I injured you either physically or through commercial at uh, commercial activity, there has to be an injured party, and an injured party is that party that has been injured from either my. Why am I? It's so hard to find stuff sometimes in this um, video of uh, this PDF of the. Um, so if somebody can look up corpus delecti because for some reason. Corpus is not bringing it up for me, and maybe I'm just not in the right area. Uh, oh, there it is. There it is, y'all. Corpus. There we go. Let me find Corpus. 
I hate having dead dead space in in uh, broadcast. But anyway, corpus delicti, the body of a crime, the body and material substance upon which a crime has been committed, the corpus of a murdered man, charred remains in a house burnt down. In derivative sense, the the substance or foundation of a crime, the sub the substantial fact that a crime has been committed. Um, where else? When applied to any particular offense, the actual commission by someone a particular offense charged. Okay, so when we talk about corpus delicti, there has to be an injured party, right? And when we go and when we are forced under uh, identity theft for these corporate these uh, corporate tribunals, which don't have delegation of authority, which don't have jurisdiction, don't have sovereignty on the land to even try to um, to perceive to have those jurisdictions, there are venues in place for that. And I read, read yesterday in another document that I had up where I talked about jurisdiction, want of jurisdiction. And I'm going to read this definition again because, okay, now I lost it. I'm going to have to go find it because law is your scimitar. Law is how you stand on your square and defend yourselves from all hypothecators, whether they're your own family members or whether they're um, other individuals trying to claim a jurisdiction that they don't have. So wanting jurisdiction, wanting of a jurisdiction does not give jurisdiction. Just because you say, oh, I put a, I, I put a black robe on, I, I rent out an office, or I rent out a, a so-called courtroom, I make it all pretty and I make it look like, and I hire these, uh, these bandits because they're not uh, officials. I hire all of these individuals to fake and fraud, defraud because I'm acting. The whole time I'm acting, I'm going to act the whole entire time. I'm going to sit here and tell you, get out. You're, I'm going to kick you out of my courtroom. If you don't be quiet, we're going to continue to have proceedings when you're not here. You can't continue to have proceedings when someone is not there. The very person that you are trying to extract finance through this corporate venue. Let, let's be real. They created this whole corporate venue in order to escheat your estate. That is the, it's the bank. They are they are charging you with some type of finance for violating some type of uh, code, statutes, and ordinance, which you're not um, subject to because you're not a subject. For them to have subject matter, you have to be a subject of their uh, jurisdiction. You're not a subject of their jurisdiction. You're a Morsh American national sovereign to the land. And I don't want to go too far outside of where I'm um, going because I'm trying to stay on task as to why I, I put this platform up. And it is about Moors having being forced to stay in uh, alternate means of domicile locations because these hypothecators who have no jurisdiction, who have no lawful position, are um, stealing the things that are for, from you. And they're the original squatters. They're squatting. All these Albions, all these foreigners, I don't care if they're from England, I don't care if they're from Pakistan, I don't care if they're from uh, Hindustanian, they're squatting on your land. They're all squatting. And they're squatting on your land because they're not, they didn't come here through an agreement that you established as the sovereigns of the land, and they're not paying you to be squatting on their land. That's all Albions, that's all foreigners. Islam? So when we sit here and talk about, but at the same time, there's administrative processes through those affidavits. Okay. An, un an unrebutted affidavit stands as fact. An unrebutted affidavit, point for point, precept for precept, it uh, stands as fact, as law, as the supremacy. Moors, when you, when you establish your allodial, um, Titles to the land. When you stab, when you send an affidavit of fact, when you send an affidavit of dismissal, when you send an affidavit of a command, when you tell them what to do, if, as long as it doesn't violate the law, they have to con con to um, conform to that command. And they are doing it. They're just not letting you know that they're doing it. Meaning, they're going to con they're going to harass you because that is what they do by hypothecating what is yours. You need to, you, Moors need to stand on their square and sit and read and, and gain knowledge on this information because it's going to be what frees you from the oppressor. Because as the Moorish National Republic Federal Government, as the Moorish American Consulate, as well as a vizier of both of those uh, governmental uh, structures that have been established to <clears throat> protect the sovereigns, which are you, which are me. And don't allow the social tell a lie vision <clears throat> or the propaganda to, <clears throat> to 
throw you off your square, to make you feel as though you're doing something unlawful. And the reasons why they can, they have the ability to throw you off your square and to get you in your fear, um, as well as a scary mentality and your root chakra is because you're not knowledgeable in the law, knowing what a sovereign is, knowing what a citizen is, knowing what a subject is. You need to know emphatically what these things stand, what they, they mean, because when you hear them, it, you'll be like, these people sound so buffoonish. They sound so buffoonish, calling themselves journalists, calling themselves reporters, reporting fake telelie news. You can't report on something or to report, to port, to report. What's the etymology on report? What's the etymology on journalism? If you're not going to state the facts, if you're not going to give a truth statement, you should be leaned. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Okay, you have the freedom of speech, but if you're injuring a person, causing injury, whether it's physical, mental, or defamation of character through calling them an extremist, calling them a sovereign citizens movement when you know who the sovereigns of the nation are, I'm going to upload a multitude of proclamations, which are statements proclaiming and professing these Albions absolutely positively know who the Moors are. You can't not know who the Moors are when you have a Declaration of Independence, an Article of Confederation, a Treaty of Peace and Friendship in, this, in a, a Constitution for the United States of America Minor. You can't sit here and at one, sa time, in one um, statement um, <clears throat> promote and celebrate your so-called independence from Great Britain as the Union colonies of Great Britain, which you, cur you currently are because you have dissolved all platforms and we're, hi we're not hypothecating our stuff back. We're revenuing and, and conveying our estate. That includes all the commerce, that includes all the corporations, that includes all the resources and wealth of the land back to the Moors. We're taking your commerce from you because you're violating the supreme laws of the land. And we need to be able to articulate ourselves in this manner and not care about how old these Albions, these older Albion women and older Albion men who get on these stands and sit here and try to act like they have these presumed authorities, which they do not. They've grown accustomed to violating and victimizing us and establishing their complete platform is on top of the heads and the bodies and the spirits and the, uh, the souls of the Moorish American nationals, whether declared or undeclared. Okay, so no matter how how high they're up on a podium and how they're trying to administer, uh, they're all bandits, terrorists, and outlaws. They're that because we told them that that's what they are. Because they're and not only did we tell them that the law tells them that is exactly what they are. I had to make no uh, concessions. I have to make no uh, redirections as to law. Law is absolute. Law is specific. That's why all law, Allah, is under. That's why you praise law. That's why you have law so you can have an armor for protection. Law is your protection. You don't need a gun. You don't need any of these things. You need to stand in solidarity as Moorish American nationals and be there for one another to support one another. Everybody needs to be consul commissioned. Islam, because when we have an issue or we have, or if an Albion, so-called Albion, tries to act like they have a claim, a Europe, modern European have a claim, they got to go to the consuls for uh, resolvement of that. Not to a corporate venue or a corporate platform. They're squatting here. They're squatting here because they're here under a, a false status, a false identity, Claiming something that is not theirs. They're actors. They're imposters. They're highwaymen. And we need to realize that is exactly what's going on here. And stop trying to paint these lovely pictures because on social media and in TVs and on the networks, they try to paint this picture that they're just so be such, such beautiful individuals and they've been here helping. No, they've been here hypothecating and destroying your very existence, your very culture. And regardless of if you want to believe these things, and regardless of if you have knowledge of these things, doesn't stop it from being the reality. You're just a frog. You're just a frog boiling in a pot, and you don't know you're boiling. I'm telling you you're boiling. And you'll probably have your whole nether regions done cooked filleted before you even realize you've been cooked. 
That's the reality. Moors, declared or undeclared, Albion's standing for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, or outside of it, you have a duty, you have a responsibility to get in line. All of you, you have no choice. You are going to do what is commanded of this government. You're all going to do that, whether you want to or not. So sovereignty, they want to talk about sovereignty, a sovereign citizens movement. Let me tell you, their platforms, their social platforms are being used to get you to think that what is yours is dirty and occult and some type of hypocrisy. They've been doing these things to us through generations because we were always singing the wrong song. Singing Black Pan-Africanism, singing uh, all of these different uh, groups when all we had to do is declare and proclaim our nationality and the, and the great God Allah and our ancestors would support us because that's all we're supposed to be doing, upholding the law. This is the land of milk and honey. This is the land of milk and honey. Why? Because people come here and they violate the supreme laws of the land because we first violated because we didn't know what, what the hell it was. We didn't know what it was. So to be a sovereign is the supreme, the absolute and uncontrollable power by which an independent state is governed. Supreme political authority, paramount control of the constitution, and frame of government and its administration, the self-sufficient source of political power from which, from which all specific political powers are derived, the international independence of a state combined with the right and power of regulating its internal affairs within, without foreign dictation. Also a political society or state which is sovereign and independent. The power to do anything and everything in a state without accountability. To make laws, to execute, and to apply them. To impose and collect taxes, levy constitute, I mean, contributions, to make war or peace, to form treaties of alliance or of commerce with foreign nations and the like. Sovereignty in government is the public authority which directs or orders what is to be done by each member associated in relation to the end of the association. It is the supreme power by which any citizen is governed and is the person or body of persons in a state to whom there is political, I mean, polit politically no superior. The necessary existence of the state and that right and power which necessity follows in sovereignty. So what's a sovereign? So when you lean, so when you lean Morris, yeah, you, you shut people down. You shut them completely down. You have to, they have to reroute and start having, uh, having those conversations with their brothers and sisters within those Albion uh, families and say, look, I need some finance. I just got shut down by Sharon Tracy Galbet, uh, vizier, the vizier Mohammedan judge of the Northeast region. And I got shut down because I'm, by, I'm, I'm warring against the state and the government, which is the Moroccan empire. And the United States is our platform. It's our platform. We're going to go back into all of our buildings because guess what's going to happen? They're going to walk their little butts right out of it because they're going to be forced out of it. And they're forced out of, out of the contractual agreement through the side. And that's why the liens are so important because it's a violation of the Supreme Laws. If you've read the UCC1 affidavit of UCC1 uh, lien, that's also in the file section of the group, you'd know that. You'd know what gives us the authority. Our sovereignty gives us the authority. Our sovereignty. Now they want to sit here and put fake news out there. Put a social, put a, put a, put a, um, what do you want to call it? Put a smear campaign on Sharon Tracy Gell Bay, but their, their lanes are on their way for Alex Ross or Rose, an article who, who posted an article and defamed my character as a Moorish American national, warring against me as the vizier Mohammedan judge of the government. So yeah, your lanes on its way. And we're going to find out if that is your real straw man name. And the corporation's going to be linked. That employs you to do that. That gave you the authority to do that. As well as, who's it? Dan? Was it Dan? Dan Carreri? Carreri? That's C-U-E-L-L-A-R. Danny? Dan? Don't know it. He was uh, 
uh, uh, ABC 6 News or something like that. Yeah, you're going to get lean. You're not going to continue to be at Morocco on our land, violating us and think you're going to continue to do business the way you've been doing it. So we've already revenued re all the estate, all of the Morsh estate of North, South, Central, Amexum, and the adjoining islands titled, go watch, go read the documents. Post it on all your platforms, Morris. Do Facebook Lives, read them to them. Let them know what the directives of the sovereigns of the lands are. So y'all all are squatting at this point until y'all are squatting until we either move you off that particular property through our repossession processes administratively, or you pay in lawful currency until we miss we display until we place you other areas within Morocco. If you're not on love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, this place is not for you. So you might want to start getting your 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 houses in order, which is a fictitious house because you don't have a house here. Get it in order and get off the land. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice is gonna dwell here. Nothing else. So you're already squatting. Because we already told you you're squatting because we've dissolved all rental agreements, all possessions, claims, corporate deeds. Everything has been removed. You don't have to pay them anymore. But you have to do the administrative processes and you have to be able to stand on your square and you have to get these documents that are on the file section of the group. You have to read them and you have to enforce them. Because Moors, y'all the sovereigns of the land, and that's what the Albion, the modern Europeans are jealous of, angry about. They ain't got no right to claim here. Not one. They can sit here and stand neck to neck to you talking about, oh, I got this, this land because I was on this land. Um, I was at I was on this at this domicile, this so-called corporate address for 20 years. All right, well, I've been here for 50,000 and I'm a sovereign. And I got all these lawful documents that prove you came here after 1600s. Maybe you came here during the 14s in the, in the so-called West Indies of the shores. You might have came here a little bit before and just migrated your butt over here. But I already was here. You hypothecated all our beautiful ancestral buildings. All of these beautiful buildings that you know a wealthy building when you see it. And you know some fake old skyscrapers when you see them. Those fake little plastic skyscrapers. They made those those real buildings that the wind can't blow the hell down. Yeah, we did that. Because we had wealth. Wealth. Real wealth. Islam? So when you look at the so-called city hall building downtown uh, corporate district of Philadelphia, look at the top of that building. Look at that new addition to the building. Look at that. Look at the difference. The age difference just in the stone alone is telling you, oh, y'all just put that there. Yeah, that been there in like maybe 40, 50 years. Maybe that, that's new. Just look at the, art, the ancient art ancestral buildings and all those greenish looking tinted um, because they're not polishing the, 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 the copper. Those are beacons. Those are energy centers. We got to clean those up. We got to uh, we got to reclaim our Moorish venue, our Moorish estate. So we know what sovereignty is. You're sovereign Moors, and they're going to keep trying to put those hater campaigns out there so you don't tap into your estate and you don't revenue. But it's already been revenue. Rebut. They can't rebut your affidavits. That's why they don't send nothing back. An unrebutted affidavit stands as law. Especially if a sovereign sent that affidavit out. If a sovereign sent it out, it's law. All you got to do is execute it and validate it. It's already law. Already. Let me go to a document that I wanted to... Um... Alright. Ooh, where's that? An unrebutted affidavit stands as truth. When properly utilized, the ultimate advantage in commercial law goes to the sovereign who has the final unrebuttable truth on his or her side as an affidavit that's why your name declarations are so important that's an affidavit of truth that's why your judicial proclamations are so so important that's an affidavit of truth nobody can rebut that they can't rebut who you are they can't sit here and tell you who you are they can't put on a piece of paper your appellation in a nom de gear type of fashion and try to tell you that's that's you no that's identity theft I establish who I am as a sovereign of this land. And I'm telling you, I'm Sharon Tracy Gell, Morris American National. I am not that nom de gear. You don't have jurisdiction over me. And I command you, you set me free. Realizing they're almost done, y'all. It's, it's like for a lot of them, they just going to keep playing this game. 
until somebody walks in their domicile where they're squatting and arrests them. Moors, a lot of them probably are going to have to be forced to go through that because they don't want to get in line. Because they won't admit, just like a lot of us won't admit, that our ancestors kind of, we, we got to pile, we got we to gotta dig out of the pile of crap our ancestors piled on top of us. Our ancestors, their ancestors. Our ancestors was, is, is, is dynamite because they created so much uh, fail-safes for us to not stay asleep for such a long time. We have fail-safes. Okay, those fail safes, those beacons of light, you're looking at one, are here to wake you up and to get in alignment with the supreme laws of the land. What, guess what their ancestors left them and what they're going to pass to their heirs. If they love their heirs, they would stop. If they love their heirs, they would acquiesce and not fight you on something is non, you can't even get in the fucking ring to fight me. You can't even get in the ring. Sovereignty babies, y'all. Don't let nobody get you off that square. Don't let nobody make you feel uncomfortable even saying it. I'm a sovereign. Yes, you are. Own it. Claim it. Be it. And sovereigns know the law. Because they the ones make it. Can't nobody else make it. When you tell them to get out of my way. Do not obstruct me. I command you to set me free. You're giving them commands. They don't listen to them, trust me. At night when they're sleeping, when they're, yeah, they getting they getting their butts handed to them by, by our ancestors. Who we just released, we just released them to them. But they did it to themselves because they're violating the laws and all they got to do is do, do right. But keep in mind they're acting. It is you who has to know that you're the sovereign and walk into, the, walk into that, that light. Now let's talk about sheriffs because they say there's about 5,000 uh, so-called sheriffs on the land, but about 3,000 of them are um, constitutional. We need to know who those constitutional sheriffs are because those constitutional sheriffs need to stand up and support because the reasons and the purpose for that platform is to be a constitutional officer, a constitutional officer, supreme laws of the land constitution. I'm not talking about the constitution of the United States of America, which ain't a binding contract because no sovereign Establish that. That's corporate. We established as the sovereigns. Our ancestors established the Constitution for the United States, which is what the sheriffs are supposed to be upholding of all venues. So the sheriff, the chief executive, this is an American law, an administrative officer of a county. I'm going to read that again. The chief executive and administrator officer of a county. You want me to read the rest? Being chosen by popular election. His principal duties are in aid of the criminal courts and civil courts of record, such as serving processes, summoning juries, executing judgments, holding judicial sales in the like. He is also the chief conservator of the peace within his territorial jurisdiction. I read some things there. Did you get the point? They are put in place to act for the sovereigns. That's you, Moors. That's me. So when we go there with our lawful documents, it is their command, it is their duty to sign our documents and do their J-O-B which is constitutionally, I'm talking about the Constitution for the United States of America and all those subsequent documents that make up the supreme laws of the land. So when you send your affidavits to the sheriff's office, it is their responsibility to read it and it is their responsibility to um, support, defend, and protect the sovereigns who are the people who've given the commands to put them in place to do the very things that they are constitutionally supposed to be doing. So what is that? What did I say? So whenever somebody sit here and tries to make a claim on you, on your persons, on your uh, property, the sheriff is supposed to use the law to effectuate it. And the law is the constitution and your commands through your lawful affidavits as the sovereigns of the land. So when you go there, but like, look, I sent this out 
I have no rebuttals. Nobody rebutted it point for point for point. I need you to sign this order. I need you to let me back into my domicile. And I need you to protect it. I need you to let all these corporate employees who think that they're officers, which they're not, they're, they're, they're uh, security guards for the corporations that they work for, the corporate overlay. You need to let them know. You need to absolutely let them know they need to stand down. And if they come anywhere near me and it's not for protecting me and my property, I need them taken away. I need them put into jail. They got to go sit in the sweat box for 30 days. That's all policy enforcers for all corporate companies because you're not officers because to be an officer, you have to be elected by the people for the people, protecting the people in their interest. So Morris, they're not supposed to be pulling you over. They're not supposed to be asking you another a damn question. They're not supposed to be treating with you at all. That's why you call the sheriff. That's why you call the sheriff. That's why you call the sheriff. Know who the so-called sheriffs of your county. Introduce them and put them on record as to knowing. Send them your nationality documentations. Here's my nationality documentations. Here's where I domicile. Here's my title. Here's everything you need to do to protect me as the national and as the sovereign of land. And I expect you to use all your arsenal to protect me. And if you're not constitutional, you take all of those. I command Sharon Tracy Galbay, Morsh American National Vizier Muhammad and Judge of the Morsh American Council of the Morsh National Republic Federal Government, commands all constitutional sheriffs to do their freaking job. And if you're not going to do your constitutional job in the supreme laws of the land, you are not a sheriff and you will never be treated as such. That means Mark, I'm, I'm sorry, Michael Donahue, Jerry Saunders, do your job. So I talked about Sheriff. Who was that? Treaty. Oh, what about the letter of 2014? Which which one are you talking about? Because a lot of different letters came out. Keep in mind, there's a lot of different organizations that have been established, whether it be European in nature, whether it be Moorish in nature, to give the information to the Moors, to give the information to the hypothecators, to give the information to everybody, because what's coming next, you're not going to like. You have to get in alignment with the supreme laws of the land, with your nativity. You have no choice, Moors or foreigners. You ain't got a choice. So if you are sovereign to another landmass, you better claim your nationality. And you better go find out what treaty Morocco got with your nation. And stand there. If you've taken things from Moors, you got to get it back. That means if a Moor sends you got lawful documentation with their nationality and all that stuff, you have to acquiesce to their commands and their authority as the sovereigns of the land. And you got to keep, you got to fix the house. You got to do all those things. If they command you to do so, you have to do those things. And they're not paying you for it. Everything is prepaid. House Joint Resolution 192. What did it say? Treaty. A treaty in international law is a compact made between two or more independent states. Two or more independent states. Two or more independent states. I'm sorry, independent nations. With a view to the public welfare. An agreement, league, or contract between two or more nations or sovereigns formally signed by commissioners properly authorized and solemnly ratified by the several sovereigns or the supreme power of each state. A treaty is not only a law, but also a contract between two nations and must, if possible, be so construed as to give full force and effect to all of its parties. That's United States versus Reed. All right, what am I saying? There's a Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786, 1787, and 1836, still in force. That treaty is between the modern Europeans, who, we've, who at one point, because they were establishing their own uh, nation state, their own sovereignty outside of the yoke of the Great Britain, they were dissolving that platform, which is the whole purpose of the Declaration of Independence. They were declaring and fought in written action their independence from Great Britain 
even though those corporations that were established that they were subject in indentured servants and slaves to Great Britain owned that Great Britain, Great Britain financed that they were working in those plantations as slaves we assisted them in establishing their um we assisted them in getting a, a standing of their own outside of the yoke of our brothers and sisters over in great britain the brutish moors and they called them the brutish moors because they were violent they were very violent towards the albions over there i'm not gonna belittle that at all they were very brutal to them and it talks about how mankind suffers atrocities because they don't have sovereignty anywhere and they have to either hypothecate and lie to you and take your, your estate or they have to be invited in or adopted in. And that was pretty much the supreme laws of the land between us and the modern Europeans. We adopted them in under that platform, the minor United, the Union Colonies of Great Britain, the Union Colonies of Great Britain, the Union Colonies of Great Britain, to get standing outside of Great Britain as well as a standing within their own territories within our 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 um dominions so as the sovereigns we gave those commands and we gave that a little bit of authority we can't give them land we can't give them resources because that is ours it's unalienable we can't take from our children to give to nobody else but we can give them a platform within our jurisdiction how to treat with one another and their sovereign in that capacity alone but not sovereign to land at all absolutely not they're subject they're subject to us, but we have a pre-existing treaty and constitutions that will treat when we have some type of disagreement. But the sovereigns rule over the land nonetheless, but we have contracts. So the treaty of peace and friendship, we can't, we can't violate that. And I'm going to read the treaty of peace and friendship on this platform because I think it's very important for it to be on the public record. So we have a treaty. Moors and, and Albion's are subject to that treaty. That is what they can hold us to. They can't hold us to the commercial contract because that's the com that commercial contract was established for them how to do business here. And we lean them when they violate it. That's why we lean, y'all. That's only the first step. That's the first step, processing those liens. Once we process those liens, they're supposed to get an alignment. You should not, there should not be not one building, not one standing building where you cannot enter with your allodial Moorish nationality identification card. And if there's a building that is not accepting your lawful documents as fact, as affidavits of who you are as a national, you need to lean them from the rip. That's why the Federal Bureau of Investigations down um, court, whose headquarters is in Philadelphia, I could not get into the eighth floor to go get my things back. Because I didn't have their corporate work card, so they're leaned not only for having my prop, my my doc, my documents as the sovereigns, but because I couldn't get into building to get my things back. Leaned. Then you're gonna monetize those leans, family. Moors, try. You're gonna send them bills. You're gonna hype pop. You're gonna get your stuff back. And y'all gonna do this, because I'm telling you, I'm commanding y'all to do it. I'm gonna command the Albions, and I'm gonna command you Moors to get your butts in line. I'm gonna do it. I just did it. Ancestors, make it so. Adverse possession. I'm just gonna read certain doc certain things. A method of acquisition of title by possession for a statutory period until certain conditions. Under certain conditions, I'm sorry. It has been described as the statutory method of acquiring title to land by limitations. The possession must be actual. Uh, title to the land. Who can establish titles? Who can establish titles? I didn't look that one up. Oh, my damn screen went blacked out, y'all. Hold on. Who can establish titles? Does anybody know who can establish titles? I think you got to be in your proper person to do that first. That's one. So you got to be in your proper person. And you got to have certain statuses. And what are those certain statuses that you have to have? Well, you got to be a sovereign. Who else can write a damn title? Can nobody else establish no title that's enforceable why can't they because they're not sovereign that's why they keep talking about sovereign y'all sovereign citizen movement that's why they keep sitting here trying to tell you but it's more it's more in in terms of complacency for their people complacency for, for their people because they know they they sit they squat on land they're hypothecating other people's lands through these fraudulent affidavits through corporate jurisdictions they ain't got no platform i'm telling you they ain't got no win there's no win more just keep doing what you're doing just keep doing what you are doing. You're doing it. You're doing it. 
They're hypothecators, they're actors. They'll never come to your face and tell you, you kicking our motherfucking ass right now. They ain't gonna tell you that. They gonna sit in the back rooms. <sighs> what the fuck are we gonna do with this shit? No other country is doing business with them, y'all. Because they know the business gotta go through the moors right now. And they trying to figure out how the hell are we gonna do this? And act like we can't do nothing anymore. Like no other country is trying to do anything with us. We don't have any power. All we got is this stupid platform to sit here and bang on these moors through propaganda. All right, let me look for title. Let me, let me see. Title. Titus. Okay. The radical meaning of this word appears to be that of a mark, style, or designation, a distinctive appellation. The name by which anything is known. Thus, in the law of persons, a title is an appellation of dignity and distinction, a name denoting the social rank of a person bearing it as duke or count. So, in legislation, the title of a status is the heading or preliminary part functioning or furnishing the name by which the act is individually done and known. It is usually prefixed prefix to the status of the form of brief summary of its content. Context. An act for the prevention of gaming. Again, the title of a patent is the short description of the invention which is copied in the letters patents for the invitation for the inv inventor's petition a new and improved method of dyeing and preparing malt oh goodness i don't like that one so we talked about appellation distinct appellation the name by which anything is known as so a title so th let's talk about title Title, your title, your bays, your L's, your Ali's, your Al's, and your days. That's your title. That's a title of nobility. Nobody else has a title of nobility at Morocco. Not at Morocco because you're sovereign here. You have the highest title. That's why you're AA222141. AA222141. That establishes your supremacy over every other so called classification of people who domicile here. So how dare they sit here and tell you, I don't know what this is. I tell you, our pawns are ignorant, incompetent, Moorish brothers and sisters who are denationalized are the pawns at the front gate guarding it. They're guarding it. That's why I keep telling you, they, the, the frogs boiling in the pot, half their bodies already filleted, already done. They don't even know. They still walking around. What is this? I don't know this card. This doesn't look like a corporate card that I'm used to seeing. Well, that's because you're incompetent. And the reasons why you're at the front desk is they want to keep they you're you're like you're like the hound dog. You're literally a dog sitting at the front desk. Woof, woof. That's really who you are. I'm not gonna sit here and, and, and glamour glamorize the fact that you're violating chapter twenty five of the Circle Seven Quran that you think is what is that can do? Only a, exactly. Only a sovereign can do an allodial title. Nobody else can do an allodial title. That's why they got those deeds, and that's why they got to go to that corporate venue, that county. They got to go to the county, but in order to get that all established, you got to go through their their tribunal. You got to be a subject. And I talked about the sheriff, who's supposed to be working for the county, but at the same time as a constitutional officer. So they shouldn't even be allowing claims to go to go through and get processed. That are deeds that are not uh step you don't even establish who you are for the record and you don't you know you had the fact that you got a notary all, all automatically puts you in subject status because you had to get a notary just the, the whole the whole pre the whole uh, uh the whole thing of getting a notary is because you're subject you got to ask permission like okay oh, you sign this because you know they don't know who i am sign this please that's what a notary is y'all all right what's the next definition State of that act of state doctrine. Act of state doctrine. Where did I put my book at? I be putting stuff everywhere. Okay. Act of state doctrine. The act of state doctrine. The act of state doctrine or foreign act of state doctrine is a principle in English. In United States, that's us, y'all. Law which states that every sovereign state is bound to respect the independence of every other sovereign state. 
and the courts will not sit in judgment of another government's act done within its own territory. I'm going to read that one more time. The act of state doctrine or foreign act of state doctrine is a principle in English in United States law which states that every sovereign state is bound to respect the independence of every other sovereign state and the courts will not sit in judgment of another sovereign's act done within its own territory. I said sovereign state, right? So you got to be sovereign. You have to be a sovereign state. You have to be the people who have established it. The Moors are the only ones who, who can establish sovereign states. Everything else is corporate. And subject to the Constitution for the United States of America. So what did I just say? All of these tribunals holding you under identity theft. Identity theft. Identity theft. They're holding you as their nom de guerre that they established law unlawfully, fraudulently when you were born through the so through the through the uh, through the social security number and the birth certificate. Those two documents together created the corporate you, and they're holding you under those nom de guerres, which is why you which is why you lean them. You lean them so they can no longer mistake in you for something they've established and they owe debts for because they're running around creating all these fraudulent documents, fraudulent liens, fraudulent everything and trying to hold you to it as the sovereign. So I command all unlawful contracts out there under nom de gears that are being mistakenly identified as the Moorish American Nationals, they're all just expunged. That's why the Albions is running around like, what are we gonna do? Oh, uh, well, you had some things to do, but you're trying to be in, in, in complete breach. You've been on top of our estate this entire time, and we're telling you you're no longer going to eat off of us. If you want to eat, you got to get in alignment with the supreme laws of the land. you got to go to the areas that we pick for you to be. And you got to figure out how to make a living on those lands. That's just the reality. Nobody can sit here and try to make us feel bad for the fact that you don't have sovereignty on our land. That ain't got nothing to do with us. You should never left your land. You should never left. You should have stayed your butt right over there in Europe and figured out life. Because contrary to popular belief, a lot of the Albions came over here for a better life than the life that they had where they're from. So they came over here seeking better lives, being very ignorant to, to a lot of things. And a lot of them did come out of uh, prisons. But a lot of, you know, the codes, like if you read the Declaration of Independence on one of the classes, I read those. They had very, you know, they were subject completely to the sovereigns over there in Great Britain, to, to, the, um, to the king. So whenever the king said something, they just had to deal with it. So they were, le they all... Through the propaganda, propaganda is beautiful. That's why the prophet said you got to get a printing press and you got to create, you got to produce these these platforms for Moors. Don't continue to fall um, fall on the fact that they don't know law and stuff. So they were being very they were being victimized there. They you know and then they came over here for you know a lot of the sons came over here to kind of work the plantations. I mean to work over here in these so called the new so called world. But they were supposed to be taking stuff back to their place. And, you know, y'all just disconnected. Y'all just literally disconnected. Like, oh, we Americans. Oh, we Europe. No, they your brothers and sisters over here. Y'all left. Y'all ain't Americans, though, either. Y'all are the same individuals y'all was when y'all crossed the sea. Irish, Dutch, French, uh, Polish, German, uh, Scottish. That's who you are. No matter what landmass you're standing upon, that is who you are. So you can't sit here as a Scottish person tell me, um... Based on my jurisdiction, how you got jurisdiction over here? Sovereign, you better go to Scot Scotland. You better go back to where you're from. Because you're not American. You're not indigenous. You're not native. And you're not white. Islam? What's the next definition? So we did the act of state doctrine. You are independent sovereign state, Moorish American nationals. You don't belong in their tribunals. Lean y'all straws. Get it done. I'm just saying. Just get it done. Stop playing games. Stop. St y'all playing with the wrong one. I don't play these games. Squatter. What is a squatter? In American law, one who settles on another's land. I'm just going to leave it there. Do I have to read the rest? 
One who settles on another's land. One who settles on another's land, particularly on public lands, without legal authority. I'll read that again. Squatter. In American law, that's Moorish law, y'all. That's more that's 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 code word for Moorish law. One who settles on another's land, particularly on public lands, without legal or lawful authority. I'm going to let that sit right there. Let me read a, a comment. I'm going to just let y'all marinate on it. I'm going to read it one more time and let y'all marinate on it. Squatch her. In American law, i.e. Moorish law. One who settles on another's lands, particularly on public lands, without legal authority. I'm just going to keep reading it. A squatter can never gain prospective title to land regardless of how long he holds possession since his possession is never considered as adverse possession. We'll read that again. A squatter can never gain pres prescriptive title to land regardless of how, he how long he holds possession since his possession never considered an adverse possession. So, yeah, when Albion's came over here in 16... 07, 1492, 1529. When they came over here, it's like, oh, let, let's go kill these people over here. Let's go kill these people over here and, and just claim their land. All right? That was called squatting. Okay? So even if they were there 50 years, even if they were there 100 years, they done grew up like 10 generations, you still squatting, babies. You still squatting. And you, you, you've been, and, and the bill has been, has been, uh, what you call it, accumulating in lawful currency. You're squatting. You don't own that house. You don't own that car. You don't own them clothes that's on your back. You don't own, own that food that's in your refrigerator. It's all been revenued to the Moorish Nationals. You better get your subject papers through the Moorish American Nationals. You better get your subject papers because we don't have citizens. We have subjects. All right. Squatter. Now, what's a squatter again? In American Moorish law... One who settles on another man's land, particularly on public lands without legal authority. A squatter can never gain prescriptive title to land regardless of how long he holds possession since his possession was never considered an adverse claim. Possession. You can't because you're not sovereign. Only person that can sit there and stand, can go into a home, a domicile, and claim it. It's not squatting. It's claiming it by possession. If nobody else has a prior claim and that claim be a title. If you're a proper person, you ain't got nothing to talk about. We ain't got nothing to talk about. And all those so-called property owners of these corporate addresses, which is why you leave the address and you name and you create a title, my estate, my Moorish estate, which is which is all in my Moorish trust, the yes you're in more about trust. All my stuff has already been conveyed in my estate. All of it. My domicile is 1111. Yeshur and Moabite estate, Moorish estate, northeast of Maxim. Then I'll have the, the brackets XREL, just like how you XREL that corporate name, you XREL that corporate address the same way. XREL, your corporate address. And then you put your, your latitude and longitude on there. So there can be no mistakes as to who, who what this is. Am I saying a lot more? What's the squatter again? In American Moorish law, one who settles on another man's land, particularly on public lands, without legal authority. A squatter can never gain prescriptive title to land, regardless of how long he holds possession, since his possession is never considered an adverse claim. Every Moorish American national that declared to proclaim a nationality is adverse possession. No renters had, no renting corporations, uh, any of these, none of them own it. You own it. And it is up to the co the constitutional officer, which is the so-called sheriff, if he's not uh, enforcing your commands as the sovereigns of the land, he y'all need to go find another one that does, and tell that one that does to fight to, to 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 detain the one that just didn't do his job. Because if you ain't gonna do your job, you're gonna be in those POW camps that you had me in for 25 days. Okay, you said if the Pope really want to help, he should release all Moorish property that is being held at the in the Vatican. Yeah, go get it. All you gotta do is go get it. But like, oh, oh, first of all, you gotta sit here and claim it over there at the Vatican. Claim it. Go down there and visit. Send a lawful affidavit to Pope Francis, corporate name, 
<clears throat> and say, look, don't call him Pope Francis. I'm calling by his nom de guerre. That's just me. Because Pope, I don't mm. Anyway, send an affidavit of fact. Look, it's, an, it's a fact that you have a lot of our Moorish heritage over here. Now, whenever our Moorish American National wants to come and, and view those documents until we can effectively re, uh, revenue them into uh, one of the uh, estates over here in, in America or Morocco, when Moors want to come and see it, you have to grant access. Only a national identification card can, can be utilized to come see, these, come see these relics. And how about you fly them over since you're so far? You fly them over, give them a hotel stay so they can get their information and in, 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 in their uh, relics over there and they can see their stuff. Do that affidavit, Carl. It's what you can prove, not what you just say. What you just say. These people know you almost there. You almost there. Just a few elements missing before you can have political power to enforce what you are trying to enforce. There's no such thing as trying. You enforce it by your will. You enforce it by your intent. You enforce it by your speaking and your spelling and your thought. It's already being enforced. Just when you say it, you have to know it. You have to believe it. These people are hypothecators. They have no standing in law. They're actors sitting in the room laughing at the Moors that be sitting here trying to check the other Moors. They're laughing at y'all. I just want y'all to know. They're like, we ain't got to do nothing because we got too many undeclared and denationalized and incompetent Moors to sit here and rebut, <clears throat> rebut stuff for us. They do it. <clears throat> they sit here, you know, they, they, they stopped actually doing a lot of stuff. They just sit here and watch and every now and then they'll say, okay, let's go fuck with this one. They get a little too close. Let's go mess with this one. Let's go mess with that. Let's distract her. Let's use her corporate uh, family members who are denationalized and ignorant and think that they are law abiding citizens. Let's let them mess with her. I don't know what you're talking about, Carl. You be talking a lot. What you be saying? Okay. All right. Oh, I don't know. What to link up Delco State Rep meeting. Who the hell is Delco State Rep meeting? Ten Chester Pike. Well, who's that? State reps. Keep in mind they corporate. I don't know why y'all be trying to be doing business with them. I don't know what y'all be trying. They are they are the gatekeepers of the bullcrap missionary work Islam. They are the gatekeeper keeper of the of the bullcrap, and they they need to be nationalized and they need to fix the platform. And you're not gonna fix it from within. You gotta fix it outside. The sheriff enforces a loyal tight on common law, but these marshals enforce uh, false court order order evictions. Okay, marshals. There's U.S. marshals and then there's so-called county marshals. It's a different thing. And keep in mind, corporate. You gotta look. It's corporate. They said like when you look at the general orders letter. The U.S. Marshal. They say nothing about county marshal. Keep in mind, hypothecators, Albion's. They have to. They have to. They have to put a face on. They have to put a face on. Because this don't work. Their their, own, their face don't work. It's called. It's called. I don't have status. I don't have nothing. So I got to put another face on. That's what they do. So. Whenever something comes out, a directive, they'll put a, a corporate face on it to deceive you. To deceive you. So the U.S. Marshal, if they are, if they have authority, they'll have the supporting documentation, the oaths, and the uh, declarations to, and to, to, to validate and substantiate that. This is why I keep telling you, don't sit here and just go based on, oh, I got a badge, so what? I can go buy one from Walmart, too, and put a number on it. They have to have lawful thought, lawful documents, and the only individuals you got to treat with as Moorish American nationals to, to to establish tranquility and peace is the is the sheriff and the U.S. marshal. You understand what I'm saying? Don't let these more these Albions continue to hide behind these corporate fictions that they keep establishing, trying to get authority when they ain't got none. Just keep leaning. Just keep leaning. Send them send them bills. Like I need to send like 20 bills out this week. Oh, uh, you ain't paid your bill. And guess who who gonna get those contracts? You gonna get you gonna give people a contract just like how they give people the contracts for you under these nom de gears? You gonna give them contracts? Same thing. Ain't nothing different. Just just mimic. I mean, they mimic your platform. Your platform is what they're using right now to violate you. So when you monetize these liens, 
You're going to get a company, a corporation to effectuate it. But it's going to be de jour and constitutional. It's going to be the Grand Army of the Republic. It's going to be the Moorish Imperial Guard. Kicking them all out of these platforms and these buildings and these homes. And guess where they're going to be? They let them go to Walmart. They ain't going to be leaving Walmart. They're going to be sitting there until we find a place to relocate you. <sighs> what is a citizen? A member of a free city or drill society. Possessing all the rights and privileges which can be enjoyed by any person under its constitution and government and subject to the corresponding duties. Citizens are members of community inspired to common goal who in associated relations uh, submit themselves to rule of conduct for the promotion of general welfare and conservation of individual as well as collective rights. So you're submitting yourself to a, sub, uh, to a citizenship. Why would you submit yourself to a citizenship when you sovereign? I, I'm just wondering. Why would you do that? Only uh, because you don't know no better. A member of a nation or body politic of the sovereign state or political society who owes allegiance. A member of the civil state entitled to all its privileges. One of the sovereign people. A... Con a, cons a constituent member of the sovereign synonymous with the people. One who, under the Constitution and laws of the United States or of a particular state, is a member of the political community owing allegiance and being entitled to the enjoyment of full civil rights. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. A corporation is a citizen of state under whose laws it is created in a non-resident of every other state. It is not a citizen within meaning of federal con I got to go a little deeper in citizen, y'all. That's a long definition, and I want to qualify everything it's saying. I need to qualify that. Because you can't naturalize into anything. You are who you are. If you're a Moorish American national, you're a Moorish American national. If you're Scottish, you're Scottish. There's a treaty that would, 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 would speak to us within that venue. You'd have to get a treaty. Like, so if you got an Irish population... That says, oh, we want to, we want to, we want to be here. We want to domicile here at Morocco, uh, and it, they would come to the sovereigns and appeal to the sovereigns, and the sovereigns would be like this. We would be like this. Well, what can you offer to me in my nation? What can you bring my nation? Oh, we have spices, or we have. They have to bring. They have to have some type of purpose for coming to us to 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 do business because we 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 that whole commercial platform is to 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 increase the wealth of Morocco. So all these all these buildings, all these corporations are to increase the wealth of Morocco, y'all. Morocco. And you're supposed to be paying. So if you're not paying, how the heck? All right. What do I want to read to you guys? I want to go to Treaty of Peace of Friendship. Where's that at? I had I thought I had it saved on my desktop. I got the Constitution. Got the Secret Treaty of Verona, y'all. Let me look. I can't see. This book is is hiding half this page, y'all. Okay, I'll just go to it in my documents. You know, I have every a constitution. I'll go into the constitutions. As long as Treaty of Peace and Friendship. I just want to read that for y'all because I think y'all need to hear. The Treaty of Peace. Where is it? The Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Okay, Terry Carson Carton dash bang this is why me and my sons we be getting more because y'all so corporate y'all corporate so corporate and y'all so corporate because we ain't teach y'all nothing as the matriarchs and the mothers we didn't teach y'all y'all more science so y'all had to defer to corporate policies and processes because you just said terry carlton 
hyphen bay. If you haven't straightened your persona, you still bound to those contracts you signed throughout your life. Nothing can be done when the records show that you are still a ward and have only made an announcement with the declaration that you put on record. No database system has been corrected until orders have been put in front of real de jure government. Carlton, what are you doing? What are you saying? Do you want me to really respond to this? Because this is what annoys me about my sons. I'm being honest. Y'all sons, y'all are y'all more corporate than us. I'm just going to tell you. And that's because we, we raised y'all. Keep, keep in mind, a son, the child, can never grow or elevate higher than its mother. So if I'm jacked up, corporate you're going to be jacked up in corporate -y. Our sons, these platforms have been established to hypothecate your sovereignty and your governmental structure, right? You said if you haven't straightened up your persona, you're still bound to these contracts. Do you know contract law? We need to read contract law. People cannot circumvent you after you get into your sovereign capacity. You're neutralized. You neutralize every contract. You unlawfully signed, which never was a contract to begin with. The only thing, reason that they were able to hold you to the contracts is because you were denationalizing property and property can't own nothing, can't be nothing, and is subject to however they want to treat you and whatever they want to apply to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I say, when, that, when you nationalize, Prophet Noble Juwale said, leave old business in your own name. Contract new business in your new name. He didn't tell you to correct that. He didn't say go correct the record. He didn't say do that. Put it down here where he said, go correct your record. It wasn't your record to begin with because you didn't even establish it. And you were a nom de guerre at the time. You didn't even have a, you didn't have no enforceability and nothing on your side to validate any of those damn contracts. Contract has to be what? What are the essential elements of a contract for it to be enforceable, binding, and subject to any act, for it to be law? For it to be law, it actually has to be a lawful contract. They cannot establish and create things on you um, to mimic you that you're subject to. So what I'm saying is, you want all those so-called, you think are contracts, they're not contracts. And they're not applying to you, especially as a sovereign, as a Morris American National, and an announcement? What are you talking about, an announcement? We do affidavits. I just read the definition of affidavits. Did you come in late? Because affidavits stand as truth, especially if a sovereign is the one established in, establishing it in his rightful capacity as a Moorish American national. Paper is just a reflection of thought. So when you write, it's a reflection of what you think. You spelled it by thinking it. You just validate it by writing it. It first came here. This is where it had to be before it could even be here. So you have to be in your right person, in your right mind, in your right status for any spell that you write to work. So all the writing you was doing while you was a nom de gear, you wasn't doing nothing. And they was doing everything. So what I'm saying is contracts are between two individuals and their proper person. So you ain't never established or created a contract. All they used is your signature and lift your signature for all those documents that you stabbed, that you processed, so they could tap into your estate as you through that corporate ward jurisdictional status person, let's say. Yes. Fraudulent concealment, voice, all adhesions. Yes. They don't have contracts with you, Moors. They're holding you to as identity theft because that's not you. They don't have status. Put your commands in. Lean them all. Get it done. And stop looking for administrative processes to get on some do not detain damn list.
What are you talking about? Do not detain list. You ain't even supposed to be talking to me. And you shouldn't be going through any of these administrative processes, these, these fraudulent administrative corporate processes to be your damn self. And that's the problem with our sons. You're trying to be yourself by not by not re recognizing and holding up your, aunt, your, your mom. Not only your mom, your wife, your daughter. Y'all y'all keep trying to circumvent us. Y'all keep trying to like get you know establish yourself outside of yourself. Prophet Noble Drew Ali was holding a woman. He was holding humanity, which was mom. Those administrative processes, the UCC processes was never meant for you, Moors, because you have sovereignty. Why are you going through that process? You have sovereignty. Just be yourself. Stand on your square. Sons, let me tell you. I don't know what to say. There's no contract that they can bring and produce. What does Taj Tariq Bey, the Consular General of the Moorish American Consulate, Taj Tariq Bey, say to you all the time? Rebut all claims. All claims. Even if it takes you five minutes to do it, just go on Facebook like, oh, I got this, this so-called bill from blah, blah, blah. Just rebut it in a, in a social platform. Y'all sit here and talk about Beyonce. Y'all sit here and talk about all this nonsense. I ain't even going to put up most of it because I don't want to feed it. Talk about the things rebut. Use this to rebut. Use this platform to rebut. You have to correct what's been recorded wrong in their, in this, in their system to have it recorded correctly. Validate what you just said. You have to correct what has been recorded wrong in the system, in their system, to have it recorded correctly. Why are you in their system to begin with? That's their system. How are you going to create anything in their system? How? I would let them know. How? How? That's their system. Their system is, is filtered, so you, you, we are not having no problems because we are, oh God. Oh, who's we? Who's, who's we? Who are you talking about? You're talking in code. Stop talking in code. Tara Carlton Bay, if you have something to provide, provide it. People talk. Let me tell you, Morris, we like to talk. We talk so much. Please help your sister Carlton. Give her what she needs. She is in need of. People talk a lot. I'm going to tell you, if you're putting declarations on the record, you're trying to correct something. No, when you're putting rec records on, when you're putting your declarations on the record, you're putting the commands and the law on the record. You're just putting the, the lawful documents on the record because it's a whole bunch of crap there. So you're putting the lawful stuff. The only thing that's supposed to be there is lawful things. All that hypothecation, all the hypothecation, all the unlawful fraudulent documents should never even got it. They should never even got on there because when you sit here and you come in, like if the clerks knew really were competent to do their JLBs, if they really were competent, they would read the document and say, okay, you didn't sign it. You, 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 you would, they would have had a signature. They would have had it notarized. No, not necessarily notarized. I'm not even going to use notary. They would have, it would be lawful, right? It would be an actual, a, a pure copy. But when you look at it, when you read all these documents that they produce, they're garbage. Terry Carlton, why don't you come on this live? I'm going to invite you on this live. Since you, you seem to have something to say, come on this live. Because I want to see what you got to say. I don't know how to put you on. I ain't even going to front. Ask to come on. I don't know. I don't need. I'm not correcting anything. I'm not correcting anything. Terry, how, how do y'all add people to the live? I don't know how y'all. I'm on my, my tablet. I have the foggiest idea. Terry Carlton Bay, you said these your government. What government, what state do you, are you referring to? And what have you done? I don't like people just talking. Produce something valid.
tangible that the people can use because we're active, not passive. Your comments are very passive. I'm waiting. How do I, how do you put somebody on this live? I don't know how to do all that, y'all. Let me find him up here. See if I can find him. Oh, it says he can't go live with me right now. I, I don't know how you're on this platform, but... Oh, I, oh, I see who this is. Oh, now I know who you are. Why you why you coming in under under, under these nom de gears? I'm call you know I'm gonna call you when I get off this platform. You know I am, and I'm not gonna put you out there even though you just put yourself out there. I'm not gonna do it. Hold on, let me get a pen. Ah, sons. That's all I can say. Terry, I'm not fucking with you. So what is your actual? <laughs> I'm going to definitely call you. Because you be talking mad junk. I'm writing his information down, y'all. Give me a second. everything I wanted to talk about no not really I was talking I wanted to go to the um treated piece of friendship because well, I love you my sons I ain't even gonna front I love y'all to death I really do yeah I, his icon didn't have a camera with it so I couldn't bring him on live so like other people have cameras that that are like attached to them and you can bring them on live but uh, I couldn't bring him on live so it wouldn't let me Which one is your, you know, I'll call you later. I ain't messing with you no more right now, uh, Amir. I ain't messing with you no more right now. I mean, Khufu. Guess who con who's been contacting me, Khufu, speaking of the devil? Yusufu? Yusufu? Okay, let me show y'all. I got to do this for him. Um, Yusufu, I know you love me. You better, act, you better act like you love me. Let me tell you, Kufu Amir L. I met him a while back at Kufu, I mean, Yusufu Kumba Bay. Where is he? Let me find out. You you should know where he's at because you should be still contacting him. You left you left that POW and you just left you just left them and banded all them all them sons. I expected you to be all up on that. Yeah, we gonna talk Kufu. Yeah, you know I love you. I do love you. Come on, man. You you, you know, but you be you be tripping. Don't act like you don't be tripping. You know damn well you be tripping. Yes, you do. I'm looking for my record, y'all. I need a public announcement page, but okay, Kusu, uh, uh, Yusufu, I'm trying to bring up his information so I can find out which POW he's at, because I think he's, um, I can't remember, give me a second, but Yusufu Kumba Bay, Yusufu Kumba Bay, let me bring him up, let me bring him up, y'all, give me a second, let me bring him up, because I want to do him justice, because he's also being unlawfully detained as a Moorish American national in the POW camp. I did a, a document yet the other day. Oh, Makun. He's in Makun State Prison. Makun State Prison. Yusufu Kumba, Kumba El Bay. Uh, Devorius. Oh, goodness. Devorius Parker is his nom de gear that they have him listed under. And he's at Makun State Prison. The care of mailing address, if you guys want to want to um, want to send him words of encouragement, because he would love to talk to you, is uh, P.O. Box 426. Oh goodness! I'm gonna have to put this in the comment section because I can't even pronounce it. It's just go and in, in, in Google Macoon State Prison uh, in uh, Corporate Territory, Georgia, and you'll get all the information. Yeah, I know, and he's supposed to be one of them. He's supposed to be one of them, Yusufu, Yusufu Kumba L. I'm at Bay. Well, anyway, he sends me these these um these doc these things that he he makes from scratch. And I, and, and I said, you know what? I'm going to sell them for him. Now, here's one. He made this with banana peels, y'all, inside the POW camp. He gave me a very di distinct um, 
information. It's M A C O N M A C O N State Prison. M A C O N State Prison. So here's one. He did this using a uh, banana. Banana pills, y'all. This is awesome, right? So I'm going to sell these for him. That's one. I was going to bring them. What, sis, have you ever Googled? No, I haven't, Larry. Did y'all never, did y'all not read the Act of State Doctrine? Did y'all? Oh, you still have, I got mine too. Mine's is over there. Where's mine's at? I wear it every day. Let me show y'all. Here's mine. Here's mine. I wear this all the time. He sent me this almost what six months ago, since months ago. This is mine. I wear this all the time. It was like six other ones, but you know, uh, on appeal. Okay, so here's another one, and you can put your own little things on it. He makes these. These are beautiful little beautiful necklaces. That's one. Here's one. I'm gonna post a picture in the Facebook. So if you want to donate to these, you gotta send me. Um, we got you know, and I can send them to you. They're pretty cool. See. I love him. I ain't, he, he, he puts a lot of work and effort in it. He does this in the PLW camp. See, that's the... Um, even though I'm showing you these in, in... Obviously, you know. So it's like a whole bunch, y'all. A whole bunch. So if you may... So if you want some of these... I'm, like I said, I'm going to post a picture of it. And you can just, you know... Put in the PayPal. I want... Which one you want. I, I don't know if I'm going to put... I don't know how to do it, y'all. That's why it's easier to just do them in the class. <laughs> <laughs> but like, hey, you want any of these? Then I'll send them and put a, and put the, the funds on his commissary for those particular trinkets um, for him. Yeah, he made them while he was there. Yeah, yeah, he does. So you've been talking to him, getting, you know, doing that whole thing. Terry Carlton Bay. Uh, 10, yeah, 15 to 10 notes. Yeah, 15 to 20 notes. The one with the, the with the thingy is, um, the one with the, uh, the, the, Bananas, 20 notes. If y'all want that one, that one's 20 notes. But all the other ones are 10, not 15. They're 10 notes. Um, I'm going to sell them for 10 notes. And then all the proceeds are going to be put on um, Yusufu Kumba Bay's uh, commissary. I agree. I agree, Kufu, Kufu. Don't act like you've been you've been on this longer than I have been on this, Kufu. You just... Mm. You, ain't got no, you ain't got to correct no damn record, though. You ain't gotta do that because that's not your record to begin with. You were like a lot. You were you were living under another platform that wasn't your platform, and all you had to do to get out of that platform is nationality. And once you stop calling my title like that, you know I'll be messing it up. Cause that's why uh, you know I'll be messing it up with you like sneaking. He like Neo in the Matrix. I'm gonna have a bunch of different titles so people don't know who I am. <laughs> I'm sitting there like who this dude. Y'all, y'all different personas. I be telling y'all, y'all just got, y'all got a lot of split personalities. I be like, who are you? What's your, what's your appellation? I ain't messing with... I know, ain't he though? I know, he's funny. I know him from, like, he had contacted me. There you go. Okay, well, where was you at on the 25th of March? Where was you? Where was you at the 26th of March? Where was you at on the 3rd of, a of April on the first tribunal? Where was you in your damn military? Because we needed our sons because that's what y'all are, security sons. Y'all got to act like that's what y'all supposed to be doing, security. Y'all supposed to be protecting mom. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Where was I at? Y'all trying to take me off my square. I was trying to talk about the treaty of peace and friendship. I'm getting out of here soon. I was supposed to go pick up my babies a while ago. I, I, I got to get out of here. Um... Treat of peace and friendship. That's also in the file section. Y'all gotta know, has anyone gotten a response from the UN regarding violations of getting more getting out of your kids? We can't protect anything that's in our jurisdiction. You gotta qualify your statement, y'all. Y'all be sitting here just talking random. I don't do the random talk. All right. Now, which one of the articles are the most important? Common old footing. It's a 
No vessel shall be, this is Article 19 of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. No vessel shall be detained in port on any pretense whatsoever, nor be obliged to take to take on board any articles without the consent of the commander, who shall be in full liberty to agree for the freight of any goods he takes on board. Islam. Article 19. No more is that Article 19 is talking about if any of the citizens of the United States or any persons under their protection shall have any disputes with each other, the consul shall con decide between the parties and whenever the consul shall require any aid or assistance from our government to enforce his decision, it shall be immediately granted to him. That's 20. Now let me read this one because this might give you reflection as who citizens are. Article 21. If a citizen of the United States shall kill or wound a Moor. So that just tells you you're not a citizen. You're the Moor. They're the citizen. So now it says if any citizens of the United States. This is 20 again. It says if any citizens of the United States or any person under their protection shall have or disputes with each other. The consul shall decide between the parties. We ain't citizens, y'all. I'm just letting y'all know. That is them. That's the, that's the Albion. We're the Moor. So they just told you, you're not a citizen. You're a Moor. And they are citizens of, that, of, that, of the United States. Protected under us. I'm going to go into this in a little more detail. Not today, y'all. I'm about to get off this platform. I'm getting off this platform. I ain't even going to finish reading, y'all. I'm tired. I've been on this platform for a while, and it's 10 o'clock, and I was supposed to be out of here by 10 o'clock. So, pack that some more. Anybody have any other questions? And yes, Kufu, I'm going to call you today. I'm going to call you as soon as I get off this platform and get myself together and on my way out the door to go see my babies. You have a seven-seater professional driver. <laughs> this long, y'all. Pack that tomorrow. I said a lot. Peace and love. I don't know how to end this platform, y'all. How do I end the platform? I say.